So, Gaijin just rolled out their finalized RP bonuses for having a top tier vehicle, and few things have changed since they last tested it. So, I wanted to go over all the details on how it works, and then give my thoughts on whether this was overall a worthy change. To be eligible to get this bonus, you just need to purchase one top tier vehicle. And the way they've defined top is that the vehicle has to be the highest rank, in the researchable tech tree, at the end of the line, and be within 0.7 BR of the highest BR vehicle in that tree. You can tell pretty easily which vehicles are top based off of whether there's an arrow connecting it to this bottom bar. Having purchased just one top vehicle qualifies you to receive the bonus in all nations, including the one that you have the top vehicle in for any vehicle you want to research in that military branch. So for example, if I have a top vehicle in Germany Air and America Ground, any aircraft or any ground vehicle I research in any tree will receive the bonus. I will not, however, get bonuses for helicopters or naval because I don't have a top vehicle for any nation for those military branches. The exception here is that new vehicles that have been added in an update recently will not receive the bonus until it has been at least 28 days since the update has dropped. The amount of research bonus you get depends on the military branch, but for air and ground, these are the bonuses you get per game. It depends on what rank it is. So for each nation, you get five charges of bonuses, with each charge applying to one full game as long as the game is under 30 minutes. So if you want to maximize the amount of RP that you get, you should try to use them on researching as high of rank vehicles as you can, because those will give you the full 100%. My thoughts on this are actually pretty positive for once. If you have just one top vehicle, you can basically get an equivalent of an RP booster that applies to 50 battles, 5 for the, each of the 10 nations, and while it can be as low as 25%, it can also be up to 100% on the high end. If you have another top vehicle in a different military branch, that's 100 battles, and that's way more than any one person is going to play in a single day. The single biggest positive change that they've made since last testing it is that having a top vehicle does not lock you out of getting the bonus for that nation. I know a lot of people beeline down just a few of the lines in a single tech tree, and now there isn't a direct penalty associated with unlocking a top vehicle for that nation. The bonus you get from these also doesn't have the same negative reward penalty that you get from stacking multiple boosters. Now there are probably other ways they could have implemented this like letting you move charges from one nation to another so that you can spend them on researching vehicles in a nation you like, allowing you to focus your research. But the way that they've implemented it here incentivizes playing all the nations to get each of the bonuses from each nation, and I don't think that's necessarily bad. They could have had the bonuses be an even amount of 100% all for all of the ranks, but I don't think the way that they've implemented it is too bad considering that the grind is usually much easier at lower ranks. This does incentivize beelining down one tree if you don't have a single top vehicle yet, but I also don't think that's too bad just because a lot of people do that anyways. I do have three major complaints about this though. First, that it doesn't apply to new vehicles. I get that Gaijin doesn't want new players to be able to research vehicles very quickly, and that they instead want people to spend GE and buy the new vehicles. Uh, but I feel like the people who are going to do that are going to do that really regardless of a bonus or not. And this goes against the idea that they want to reward long-time players. Secondly, the lack of SL bonuses. Gaijin has been introducing a lot of other RP bonuses and discounts such as the high kill bonuses and foldering discounts, but it doesn't really mean much if they keep the SL costs and rewards the same since you can't play the research vehicle until you've purchased and crewed it. The only SL discount that comes to mind is the reduced SL cost for early in-game deaths, but that was a while ago and it doesn't really keep up with the amount of RP cost reduction that they've been doing. If the expectation is that we are supposed to purchase our vehicles during the SL sales, then I think those sales are too infrequent for that to make any sense. And finally, that this whole thing took way too damn long. It does not make sense that it took two years to figure out how to set this up. The obvious answer is that they probably saved this for last just so that they could milk the player base as much as possible before they had to eventually implement it. And while I kind of want to be upset at how long it took, frankly, I'm glad that it did come in a relatively workable state. Anyways, that's all I have to say on this. Uh, I'm going to go overdose on vitamin gummies now. Bye.